Welcome back. You are tuning in to Trader's Nation. My pleasure to have with us here today, back once again, Sean Broderick. Sean, welcome back to Trader's Nation. How are you today? Hi, thanks very much for having me on. Good, good. Sean, what happened here? Uh, you got into the 10 minute segment. Usually you're on the, you're on the 20 after segment. Uh, what we got here? Oh, could it be the new book, The Ultimate Suburban Suburb <laughs> Survivalist Guide, Sean? Congratulations. Well, thanks very much. Yeah, it, it was a lot of work, and uh, if I'd known what I uh, was going to go through writing it, I would have moved and changed my name, but uh, no. So, yeah, it's <laughs> that's right. It's a book, too, I must say. Oh, I, I definitely, without a doubt it is, and I'm going to go through some of this stuff, but Sean, this thing is thick. I mean, there's a ton of information in here, and we're going to let everybody know how they can get a copy today, too, by the way, before we're done. All right, so, Sean, listen. Uh, if you want to do better than survive and make smart money moves, will the Ultimate Suburban Survival Guide do that for people? Sure. I have a whole bunch of information there on, like, finance and also things about how to handle all the emergencies that can really come our way in the future. I think that the next five years and beyond will be shaped by emergencies like energy, water, food, climate, debt. Now, you can hide under a rock or else sit on your couch and just wait to see what happens. Sure. Or else you can be, really be... You can really be a a person who plans, who actually uh, prepares, and who is a proactive for all the stuff that is coming our way. Right, and I tell you what, I've I've read the Ultimate Suburban Survival Survivalist Guide, and it just came out too, by the way. And um, yeah, if you if you're going to sit under a rock, you're going to have a hard time chewing off that rock because if something does happen, you need to be prepared. Um, no doubt about that. Not only monetarily, but food exit strategies, things of that nature. All right, so in, in the face of disaster, we know it's a better plan than, a, a better, there is a better plan than to panic. We saw a lot of panic in 2008 and 2009. How do we bulletproof ourselves with a plan for disasters? Well, it all depends on, like, what a person's real comfort level is for, like, risk. Some people want to be out of the market, you know, and I understand that completely. Sure. They get out, they stay out, they put most of their money in, like, short-term uh, treasuries and hold, like, some things like a gold, silver, that kind of thing. But other people want to ride the real long-term trends, the big mega trends. And there are ways to do that, which I explain in my book. Okay. And then other people have a more short-term attitude. They know they can ride, you know, these, like, short-term trends in the market with, like, some accuracy, and so I have ideas on that as well. It really depends on what people actually feel they can do what they are comfortable with. When it comes to your personal life, you have to start preparing now. I mean, if if you read the book, you, you know what I talk about. I sure. talk about everything. How to buy the right bicycle for a post-peak lifestyle. Right. How to stock up on water, which is something most people never do. And yet, water is the thing you're going to need badly if your city water system goes out. Sure. How much food you should have. What you should have in your car. There's many different areas you can cover there. Alright, so we're not only talking about financial survival here, Sean. I mean, we're talking about survival, survival, where money won't do you any good unless you plan on getting backed up chewing it. Um, so water is one thing. Now, for us, Sean, this is what I did, and people are on a well and a septic. I'm glad that I am. I actually, if we lose power, I actually put a bypass power switch. So if my power goes out for an extended period of time, I can hook a generator up to this and make sure you got the proper size generator to pump that water out of the ground because you are going to need water. Any other thoughts to that, Sean? Yes, you are a very smart person. I mean, so many people don't do that very basic thing, check their own water supply. But there are things you can do, and you don't have to spend an arm and a leg. Right. A lot of this book is how, is actually how to do this stuff without spending huge amounts of money. And like in the title said, it is it is... A suburban survivalist guide. This isn't about moving out to a remote farm somewhere. This is how to prepare in place. All right. And so there's a lot of tips in there. You can make small changes in your lifestyle now right. that will really save you a ton of pain down the road. Right. A small change, would that be, for instance, I know people were stocking up on canned food, and they still do. They buy an extra one or two cans, and they date them every time they go to the store and rotate them in their storage supply. Would that be a good example, Sean? Yes, that is an excellent example of, like, what you can do. If you can just build up a, like, three-day food supply, yeah. you'll be better off than 90% of your neighbors. And, like, we have hurricanes here in Florida, yeah. and the day after every hurricane, I see people lined up at the supermarkets and stuff. They simply are not prepared for anything. 
Right. And so they are going to get hungry in a hurry. If you can make some small preparations, you'll be way ahead. All right. I was uh, involved with FEMA and the uh, and the extra local exercise drills. And one of the things that they were uh, indicating is that you have to have an exit strategy and don't count on the freeways. They will be bogged down. What's the best way to map yourself out if you need to get out of the area? Actually, I, I found some fascinating stuff about this. You can go onto a Google Maps. You can map your like escape route in like any direction, and you have to have more than one escape route because right. one might be blocked. Right. Also, you need to make plans with friends who live in like other areas. So if they have something bad happen in their area, right. they can come stay with you. If you have something bad happen in your area, you can go stay with them. That's just one of the many things you can do. But you need to make these plans ahead. You hate to be on the highway right. as some kind of a refugee. Calling up friends, seeing if you, if like you can crash with them for a few weeks. Right. One one other personal note. Also, as a family, come together and have that emergency contact person that is out of state. For instance, I'm in Phoenix. You're in Florida. Um, and I would say, listen, if if we get separated or something happens, or you're at school and then we're, we just can't get together, we have that one person we can contact that's out of state. You don't want them in state. Why? Because simply they may be in chaos also. So. Right, and um, also every member of the family should have all those contact numbers on a sh on a like sheet of paper that is actually plastic laminated, yeah. so it can travel with them. Right. And so if your kids get get separated, God forbid, right. they won't be really lost. They can at least call somebody if they can find some kind of working phone somewhere. Yeah, Sean, we should have low denomination of dollars, shouldn't we, with us? And maybe what three, four hundred dollars just in case uh, as an emergency fund or. Some people obviously more for a longer period of time, but shouldn't they be in low denominations, for instance, like a dollar, maybe even five dollars? Because when you're out and you're in an emergency, you don't want to be spending twenty dollars on a bottle of water, do you? Right. That's, uh, that is something that's really important. And something else that I cover in the book is like many people have like a gold coins at home and stuff like that, and there's nothing wrong with that. Right. I do too. Right. But, if we get to a currency crisis, which is one of the emergencies we could be facing, then you don't want to be the guy out in town spending these big gold coins. You want other things you can use, sure. so you don't have to be the big spender, because when you do that, you make yourself a target. Right. And so I also speak about home defense and that kind of thing. Sure. All right. So we should, if we don't have, if we're not in a big house, let's say, and we don't have those privacy rooms, if we don't have those safe rooms, how do we defend ourselves? Well, uh, I cover a lot of stuff. <laughs> 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 I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I here, but at least gives you ideas about different ways you can hide things. Sure. You can also hide things in your car. Of course, you don't want to leave it in there when you take your car in to be serviced because right. then your mechanic gets a heck of a sure. tip. Sure. But That's if right. you think your like, escape plan involves getting in your car and just getting the heck out, yeah. that might not be a bad thing to do because then it's already there and you don't have to worry about it. Sean, should we have like backpacks packed already with first aid, uh, some water, some a blanket, uh, things like that, and have them... And for have one for each person in the family stuffed, let's say out in the out in the garage closet or something, ready to go if we need to go. All right, this will sound paranoid for many people, but yeah, okay. we have one big we have one big a backpack in like each of our cars that has enough. Um, has enough stuff for sure. everyone in the family. And then in the garage, we have a larger go bag. So in case we're home when this happens, yeah. we can throw that in the car and just leave. And that really puts you ahead of the pack because so many people will have to pack if they want to leave, if they want to get out. You want to hit the highways ahead of that crowd. You sure. really want to get out there. Yeah. And so that's why having things packed ahead of time is one of the many smart things you can do. Yeah, just that 20, 30 minutes or maybe even an hour, because it probably would take an hour to pack that much for everybody, because let's face it, you're frantic. You're going to try to figure everything out. Um, you're going to have that much more time. You don't want to... It's like trying to fit 100 people through the door. You want to right, exactly. You want to be and um, uh, also in the book, I like have the list of when you, can, when you should consider leaving your home. Right. Uh, by the time they say, get out of your house, it's far too late. You need to look for the other indicators before that and know when you need to bug out. All right, there you have it. Sean Broderick's with us today, the ultimate suburban survivalist guide, the smartest money moves, and to prepare for any crisis, of course, with us here today. Sean, where can we get a copy? Barnes & Noble, Amazon.com? Yes, they're on there, and uh, also we have our own website, which is ultimatesuburbansurvivalist.com. Yeah. Go there. I think they might be throwing in like a free report or two with that as oh. well, if 
if you go to that website. Very, very nice. Head on over to that website today. Head on over to that website today. Sean Broderick's with us today. Sean, as always, it's a pleasure. You've been with us forever. We always appreciate your time here on Trader's Nation. Thanks. I always have a great time when I come on your show. So, yes, thank you very much. You're more than welcome. Get a copy today. We'll be right back.